So we're now reaching the end of the conference, and I hope that you'll take back many happy memories of the conference and the wonderful city of Oslo. It was just fantastic what we heard on the last two and a half days. So it was an exhilarating two and a half days of learning so many different aspects of domestic revenue mobilization, and also a chance to meet old friends and make, hopefully, new ones. So I want to offer some vote, a vote of thanks to my colleagues who put this wonderful show, the conference together. And I'm going to start first with my colleagues who acted as chairs, panelists, as well as many other roles backstage. You've seen, most of you have seen them working so hard in the last few days. And actually, our conferences are a major logistical exercise. We start a year in advance in planning. And I'm grateful for the work that my colleagues have put in in different constituent parts of UniWider over the past one year. It was a tremendous collective effort and so well done to all of you who did, who did take part in this preparation of the conference. Secondly, the academic leads of the different works teams of the DRM program, uh, and I'm going to name them, Tony Addison, Amina Ibrahim, Rose Ngugi, Yuka Pitela, Pia Rattenhuber, Anthony, Ant, uh, Antonio Savoy, Abraham Stagem, and Fintop but ably supported also by several research associates, uh, Jesse Lastunen, Maria Juste, and Rodrigo Oliveira, and also excellent research assistant, assistants too, for the work that's been so wonderful, the wonderful work we've done in the last four years, and which was presented in ample measure in these last two and a half days. So we've heard so many interviews of all the different work we've been doing in different work streams in the last two and a half days. I'll now like to particularly thank Jutta Stenholm, who played a key role in organizing the conference and making sure everything works smoothly. I don't know if I can see you anywhere here. There you are. Okay. So let's all thank you. Uh, <laughs> so fantastic job, you Absolutely amazing. Um, so uh, while this conference uh, brings the first phase of the domestic revenue moderation program to a close, our work in this area is going to continue into a second phase. And we're very grateful, Norad, for continuing to support our work so generously. So please do stay, stay tuned in, visit our website to stay a bit of the many exciting projects to come now for the next four years uh, that we have planned for the second phase. And just, um, so this is going to be really exciting that we're carrying on the work we're doing already in the first phase, which you heard in this conference. I also want to say that please do follow us on our social media accounts, subscribe to our newsletter if you haven't done so as yet, linked on our website to learn more about our work and upcoming events and opportunities. We'll be sending our feedback form, this is important, a feedback form after this conference. So please fill that out so we can continue to improve our conference experience. You get to hear from us shortly on the feedback form. I would like to invite Under Secretary General of the United Nations and the Rector of the United Nations University, Professor Silitsi Marwala, to make some closing remarks. Thank you. Uh, good uh, afternoon. I don't want to stand between you and lunch, so I am going to be quite, uh, quite uh, quick. Um, Kunal, you were thanking everybody, and of course you have not thanked yourself. And I would like to start by thanking Kunal. Uh, United Nations University has uh, 13 institutes in uh, 12 different countries. I think I can confess silently that uh, WIDA is definitely my favorite institute. <laughs> it is the only institute that I have uh, visited you twice and not in Finland. <laughs> uh, of course, here in Oslo and in Pretoria a few um, uh, weeks ago. In Shakespeare's 1599 tragedy, Julius Caesar, Cassius, a Roman nobleman, tells his friend Brutus, and I quote, it is not in the stars to hold our destiny, but in ourselves." Close quote. Shakespeare's prose perhaps best concludes this development conference. In recent years, only partly attributable to the pandemic, we have fallen off the track. 
Across the board, we are faltering in our quest for a more inclusive, just, and equitable future. As we inch closer to the 2030 deadline for the Sustainable Development Goals, we need actionable solutions. We need will. And of course, we need finance. Uh, the Secretary General uh, uh, estimates that uh, for us to be able to meet sustainable development goals by 2030, we'll need in excess of a trillion dollar. Of course, this is huge amount. It puts some of uh, the development institutes, institutions uh, at an inadequate position. This comprehensive blueprint for addressing global challenges, the Sustainable Development Goals, include dealing with the issues of poverty, the issues of inequality, issues of climate change and environmental degradation. And of course, this will require a caseous-like approach. We always, uh, we, we were talking about uh, global warming. The Secretary General now is calling it global boiling. The temperatures are at a record levels. Uh, 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 this year has been quite, uh, quite uh, bad. And the situation is not going to get better un unless we actually act, and we act now. In fact, acting now is already too late, and therefore we cannot afford to postpone this issue for another day. As the invaluable contribution from the last two days have demonstrated, domestic revenue mobilization is an important facet of development. And I come from Africa. And uh, I always say that uh, Africa is not a poor uh, continent. There are many, many people who have become rich, many, many nations that have become rich because of Africa. If we were to close Africa from the rest of the world, the global production system will stop working. I mean, this is a fact, because it is really a primary source of raw, raw materials. And of course, many of those resources, and, and, and I've heard people saying this, uh, are exported elsewhere to tax havens. And of course, the consequences of that are dire to many of us. So poverty is a man-made phenomenon. According to the International Monetary Fund, this mobilization of revenue is essential for low-income and emerging economies to suitable finance their development needs. I will have to add, it is more than essential. This is essential in order to sustain high and inclusive growth while preserving debt and uh, macroeconomic stability. Achieving the SDGs requires concerted efforts from all nations, particularly those in the Global South, which often face significant economic, social, and environmental challenges that are skewed in the overall global picture. And of course, if we look at um, climate change, even though the global south uh, gets the large share of the consequences 
it w actually contributed very, very little to global warming. As the revolutionary Walter Rodney wrote in 1972, and I quote, in a way, underdevelopment is a paradox. Many parts of the world that are naturally rich are actually poor. And parts that are not so well off in wealth of soil and subsoil are enjoying the highest standards of living, close quote. Yet there are solutions to this very paradox that not only address developmental hurdles, but encourage agency in this process. When implemented effectively and transparently, domestic revenue mobilization can contribute significantly to a country's socioeconomic progress and development goals. However, the eff effectiveness of domestic revenue mobilization in promoting development depends on various factors, including the tax system's design, the administration efficiency, and the government's ability to allocate resources wisely. The World Bank warned earlier this year that since the onset of the pandemic, tax revenue dropped by 12% in real terms, and in many countries, ratios of tax to gross domestic product have fallen below 15%, which is considered the minimum necessary to finance a state's basic functions. We are in a dire need of actionable solutions. As the IMF declared, this strategy against the socioeconomic context of low income and emerging economies serves as a wake up call. It is within these very corridors that we have teased out the arguments, analyzed the challenges, and posited tangible and lasting solutions. And I'm reminded of a statement by Marx when he was writing to Angels. And if I were to quote, you know, philosophers have analyzed how the world looks like, but the aim is to change it. And I think all these things that we have analyzed, they have to become actionable solutions. And for them to be actionable solutions, all of us have to play our part as citizens, especially those of us with uh, opportunities of exercising renewal of tenure of office every five years. Uh, we have to also be wise. The path to achieving the sustainable development goals requires proactive and strategic actions by countries in both the global south and the global north. This also calls for a reframing of leadership with an emphasis on transparency and good governance alongside the prioritization of key development areas and metrics. And of course, I come from South Africa and uh, about uh, 15 years ago, uh, during the tenure of uh, uh, Tabo Mbeki, we introduced the Africa peer review mechanism in order uh, to bring about good governance, including the prevention of illicit flow of capital. The big question that we have to ask ourselves, has the Africa peer review mechanism worked? Given the scale of the problems that we face, and given the wealth of the African continent, I don't think we have succeeded. We need to design mechanisms uh, or perfect this mechanism or improve this mechanism so that we can be able to deal with this issue, which is really illicit flow of capital to the detriment of all of us. 
Indeed, these efforts tailored to each country's specific context and challenges can help bridge the financing gap and lead to a more sustainable and equitable future for all. As Caroline Belden, the author of The Inclusion Solution, appropriately phrased it, and I quote, equality is leaving the door open for anyone who has the means to approach it. Equity is ensuring there is a pathway to that door for those who need it, close quote. Indeed, domestic revenue mobilization is one such pathway towards achieving sustainable development. In closing, this was a very successful conference and you can give yourself a round of applause. Thank you very much. Thank you.